Hey everyone, it is day 10 of 2022 Glow Skin Gems, and for day 10 we're talking about sunscreens, specifically the face sunscreens. If you're unaware, I have my Sunday sunscreen review series where I review a new sunscreen every single Sunday. And since that is a once a week thing, I have reviewed over 50 sunscreens this year. I was gonna try to rank all 50 of the sunscreens that I tried this year for this video, but we truly do not have enough time for that. So I just condensed it down to this top 10. And if you see me looking down, I'm just referring to my notes because 10 sunscreens I had to reference for a bit. Also, don't just skip to the end of the video and assume that because it's ranked number one, it'll be the best sunscreen for you. All 10 of these sunscreens I think are really great and will work for someone depending on the case. Um, it just depends what you're looking for. I'll have all 10 of these linked in my bio in my shop, my shelf, in a little category there that you can view this at any time when you happen to come across this video. Um, but yeah, that's about it. Let's get into the ranking. Number 10, we have this one from Isntree. This is the Hyaluronic Acid Watery Sun Gel SPF 50 PA4 Pluses. Um, this is the old packaging. They updated the packaging now, but I believe the formula is still the exact same. This one retails for about $18 for 50 milliliters. I had to include one of these. If you are aware, there's like 10 different sunscreens that are similar to the Beauty of Joseon sunscreen. I have a similar formula base, but um, each company tweaks it a bit for themselves. And all of them generally don't work for me because they have Tinosorb M in them and that tends to cause a bit of a white cast on deeper skin tones, mine included, um, but not all the time. This one in particular was really great. I didn't notice much of a white cast of this one um, at all, actually. I don't. If I look back on my review, I didn't see any white cast. The only reason I didn't like it as much is because it showed a bit of grayness in my facial hair. So like, if, if it's at the point where my facial hair is at now, where it's grown out for over a week or so, um, this will show in it but if I'm freshly shaved, this one works just fine for me. It is lightweight. I do find it's a bit too shiny on my skin, but if you like Beauty of Joseon, I feel like that's not an issue for you. So out of that whole cinematic universe of sunscreens, I think this one is probably the best one. Next up, we have this one from Claire's. This is the All Day Airy Sunscreen SPF 50 Plus PA4 Pluses. This one retails for around $18 for 50 milliliters. This is the updated Claire's SPF from that whole fiasco with sunscreens that happened um, a couple years ago where there were issues about the testing of them. Um, this one's updated, it has newer filters, um, beefed up a bit, so it has more protection, more testing, yada yada. Feels lightweight, easy to apply, it does have a radiant finish. Um, so super oily skin might not like this one, but I reached for it a lot when I was using this one because it just feels so lightweight. It was a good day-to-day -day SPF for me. Especially when I was using something mattifying underneath this one, it worked out fine for me. Moving on, we have this one. This is the Nivea Japan UV Super Water Gel SPF 50 PA3 Pluses. This one's more on the affordable side. It retails for around $10. All these prices fluctuate, especially the um, Asian sunscreens, because depending on the retailer you buy them from, they might have a sale, they might not, if it's Yes Style versus Stalvana. Um, so the prices might be different, but this one's around $10. You get 140 milliliters of product in this one, so a good amount. It'll last you a while. You'll be encouraged to use it more often and reapply with it because you're not spending a whole bunch of money on it. Feels lightweight. It's a nice natural radiant finish. And this one is what I'm currently using. It's like my day-to-day -day sunscreen. Like if I don't want to think about it and I just want to select something from my stash to put on for the day, it'll probably be this one. The things that are holding this one back from being higher up on the list is because um, it's PA3 pluses. I wish it was four pluses and had a little bit more UVA protection. And also I don't think that this is waterproof or water resistant. Moving on, this one is a newer launch from this year, I believe. This is the By Wish Trend UV Defense Moist Cream SPF 50 Plus PA4 Pluses. Retails for around $22 for 50 milliliters. I was surprised by how much I like this one because I wasn't really expecting to like it, um, but it feels great. It's a cream texture, but it is still lightweight, a bit more on the moisturizing side, but not greasy. It applies really easily. That's why I find myself reaching for this one the most. Like. Um, I feel like I don't need to spend a ton of time rubbing this one in. I just skip my moisturizer when I use this one because of it's a bit more moisturizing, but I believe that's how they intended it to be used. So, I mean, that's great. It's not water resistant, so that's also why it's not higher up on my list. Next up, we're getting into some European sunscreens. This one is the La Roche-Posay Anthelios UV Mune 400 Hydrating Cream Fragrance-Free SPF 50+. This one retails for around $18 for 50 milliliters. Um, the European Anthelios UV Mune versions of their sunscreens that got released this year or last year. Great. I've tried um, a couple of them, I believe. They're all great. The European La Roche-Posay sunscreens in general are great and I like them better than the US versions of them. And they have so many options. 
Um, they also have the fluid version of this, the Invisible Fluid, which I like as well. However, I do slightly prefer the hydrating cream over the fluid because I just find that is I just find that this applies easier. Um, it's just easier to work with the cream than a fluid. It's a natural radiant finish. Worked nicely as a daily SPF for me. Um, some super oily skin people might not like it because if you prefer a matte finish, this isn't the one for you. But worked nicely for me. Um, it's very protective, UVA, UVB protective, and it's sweat resistant. Okay, now we're getting into the top five. So rank number five on my list. This one is from Murad. This is the Murad Oil and Pore Control Mattifier SPF 45 PA4 Pluses. This retails for $48 for 50 milliliters. More on the pricey side, I believe this is the priciest one on my list. Um, well, actually, that's debatable. But this is my pick for the Sephora shoppers out there. Um, not many sunscreens at Sephora work for me or ones that I would recommend, but this one is really nice. It has a soft matte finish, perfect for my oily skin type. It almost feels like it has like a blurring or a smoothing quality to it, which I also really like. The downside is that obviously it is pricier than other ones on this list, so that's why it's not ranked higher. Number four, we're getting into Evy Technology. This is the Evy Technology Daily Defense Face Mousse SPF 50 PA4 Pluses. Pricing on this one is a little bit tricky because generally this retails for uh, $25 for, uh, I believe this is 75 milliliters of product, um, which is a decent price point, especially for the, the amount. Uh, however, downside to this is that shipping is an issue. They now do ship to the US from their website so you can get it theoretically. However, last time I checked shipping to the US or my address was $60. So I wouldn't price this as an affordable option at all. If you buy it in bulk, that could make it more worth it because you're not just paying $60 for one product. However, if you're just trying a product for the first time, you're not gonna wanna buy it in bulk. Feels great on the skin, natural radiant finish not too greasy on my skin personally. Um, when I went to California this year, this is the only sunscreen that I brought with me and it worked out great. Honestly, it's just fun to use these mousse type sunscreens. Um, I don't know, have some enjoyment in life. There also is this bigger version that is for the kids version, the sunscreen mousse. Um, this one's nice as well. However, I do like this one because I feel like it's a little bit creamier uh, than this one. So I find this one easier to apply on the face and feels better on the face. And it still has the long lasting protection and sweat and water resistance as this one. Even though this one may be a bit more long lasting and more sweat resistant, but this one's still great. So it's ranked number four. Ranked number three, this is the Biore UV Aqua Rich Aqua Protect Lotion SPF 50 Plus PA4 Pluses. Retails for around $12 for 70 milliliters. This is one that I very recently tried out. I think this is like one or two Sundays ago. I do like this one better than the original um, Aqua Rich Watery Essence version of the BRA sunscreen in the sense that I feel like this one is less shiny on me. Um, it's a bit more matte. I wouldn't say that it's super matte though. It definitely still leaves some glow coming through on the skin. It's affordable, has good protection, so it's ranked very highly on my list. However, it is fluid and I personally don't love fluid sunscreens. I just find them harder to work with than something that's like a cream. So it, it's, it's not my perfect sunscreen but it is great and I definitely recommend it for people to try. Now we're getting on to number two. This one is the Starface Clear as Day SPF 46. Another surprising pick for me because I definitely was not expecting this one to be as good. This is one of the very few um, clear gel sunscreens that I do like. Generally, I tend to not like those sunscreens because I feel like they're, like they leave a greasy, filmy layer on my skin that just is uncomfortable and makes me look kind of shiny. But this one is generally actually matte. It's water and sweat resistant, very easy to apply because it's literally a clear gel. You don't have to sit there rubbing it in for like minutes and minutes trying to get it to absorb. It's no fragrance, it's just silky smooth matte goodness. So um, I definitely recommend this one. I've recommended this to other people in my life as well. Um, it's very nice. If you've been around for a while, you probably are not surprised because I used to talk about this one a lot. And I did try this updated version during my sun week earlier this year. This is the Eucerin Sun Oil Control Gel Cream Dry Touch SPF 50 Plus. It retails for around $14 for 50 milliliters. I purchased this from Care to Beauty. Um, at the time of filming this, it is out of stock. And that was one of the main issues I had with the sunscreen because it, whenever I needed it, it was not in stock. So if you see it in stock, buy it in bulk. And let me add, I recommend the European version there are many different versions of these sunscreens. The European version is the one that I like, not the, the US version that came out during the past year. That one says oil control, it is not oil control, it is not mattifying. This one is truly oil controlling and mattifying on my skin. And this is also the regular version because I know the European version also has a new tinted version. I'm not recommending that one. Haven't tried it, but I doubt that it would work for me. So European untinted version. 
make sure you get that version. I like the old version as well, but this one is just newer and better. It has the same feel, in my opinion, but it does have the updated UV filters. It has more of the like boosted protection, which is always a great thing. It's mattifying on my skin, but it's not too drying. It um, has a nice dry touch feel, nice gel cream texture, helps control my oils throughout the day, reapplies well. This really is just like the goat of all sunscreens for me personally. Sunscreen is such a personal thing. Not everyone's gonna love the same sunscreen. So this is my number one sunscreen of the year, but it might not be your number one sunscreen of the year. Any of these 10 sunscreens that I mentioned might not be your favorite sunscreen. It just depends on what we're all looking for and what we all like in our sunscreens. This is one that I've purchased many times before and the fact that I just reformulated it to make it even better, it just has to be my number one. So that's about it. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed, I hope you're enjoying uh, 2022 Glow Skin Gems. There's a couple more days left. Um, we're talking about body sunscreen tomorrow, so make sure to come back for that. There's gonna be more content throughout the rest of the year, but since this is a talking to the camera video, I'll just say it here. Thank you guys for tuning into my content for all of 2022. I um, really appreciate it. Hope you're here next year as well. I'm definitely gonna be more sunscreen reviews. That's mainly what I do. And other content as well. I would love to hear about your favorite sunscreens of the year that you've tried. Um, always looking for more suggestions of what to try next year. And also would love to know if you've tried any of these sunscreens because of me, or if you bought a sunscreen or found your favorite sunscreen because of my reviews. Always love to hear that. And that is about it for this video. Thanks for tuning in for day 10, um, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.